Yes, I'm here talking with Mr. Morris Broadnax, and Mr. Broadnax, we just want to start out by telling us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a native Detroiter, I'm 71 years old, I have quite a history of involvement with my community here in Detroit. I was also a part of the Motown crew that was became so famous here in Detroit. I had the pleasure of working with Stevie Wonder as a kid and all of the Motown artists. Okay. I worked with a producer named Clarence Paul, who was the uh, producer of Stevie Wonder. Okay. And uh, through him I had the opportunity to work with all of the Motown acts that were there then at that time. There were the Supremes and the Temptations, the Four Tops, the Contours, all of the groups were there and I had a chance to work with them. My responsibility with the uh, production team was the overdubbing of the voices, background and lead vocals. Alright, and which, um, what, you know, pretty much led you to Motown? I uh, went to Motown trying to get a recording contract. I, my, I had friends, uh, the Four Tops had just signed with Motown, and I knew uh, one of them, Duke, was one of my neighbors when we grew up. And I knew his brothers and sisters very well. Well, when I was singing at that time, I went there for a recording contract, but they were not interested in me as an artist at that time. But they happened to like the song that I did, which was a song that I had written for my first wife who died in 1955. A song entitled, If My Heart Could Sing. All right, well, um, I want to ask you some more about uh, that, but um, right now we're going to kind of pause, come back, and talk to you more. Okay. Next, um, Mr. Broad, next. Um, so you talked about your involvement and how you got involved in the Motown. Uh, can you tell us more about right. that? Right, yeah. Um, well, from that, they liked the song that I did. And uh, at that time, I only had another song that a, a friend of mine, a guy named George Foreman, had written the lyrics to. And uh, they asked me uh, about the other material that I had, and that's what I told them. Then they said, well, what can, what can you come up with in a couple of weeks? So I came back in a couple of weeks, and they wanted to sign me to an immediate contract right there, but I was kind of leery and skeptical, so it was a while before I really signed a, record, a writer's contract with uh, Joe Bett. Okay. Really, with Stein and Bandstock, that was the name of the publishing company at that time. Okay. Which led you into... Um... It led me into uh, the production team with Clarence Paul. And I had a real beautiful experience with this production team because my job was overdubbing all of the voices, okay. lead and background voices. Okay. So this put me in close proximity to all of the artists and I had a chance to work very closely with the artists. Okay. All right. And some of those artists, um, would you like? see, there were uh, uh, most of the uh, four tops who I went there with, Temptations, uh, and started, I don't think they, had, they didn't have a record yet. And uh, the hot artist at that time was Mary Wells, and uh, I think Baird Strong was kind of strong at that time. Okay. Also, they had uh, uh, a few other artists that were like um, Jimmy Ruffin's brother. Um, he was really a big star before his brother, uh, his name is Jimmy Ruffin. Jimmy Ruffin. Before David, David Ruffin became okay. a star. And he's a very talented brother. I think David 
uh, Jimmy spent most of his time overseas and uh, during that period of time too, and I think he's still there. But I had a very wonderful experience because I had a chance to work very closely and get to know all of the acts okay. that were at Motown at that time. Right. And um, I also understand that uh, you were instrumental in helping Stevie Wonder out in this uh, early. Yes, I, I think I was one of the first uh, to discover that he had this writing ability. Because he would come to me, call me Nax, say, hey Nax, listen to this. <coughs> and he'd play a, 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 some music that maybe had three strong musical themes in it. So that's how I began to work with him in breaking these themes down. And yeah. that's where I began to recognize that he had this writing ability. And uh, I started yeah, yeah. encouraging him in this area. And, and that's, as, that's how uh, we began to write together because a lot of these ideas would, were developed just from him coming to me and just like uh, until you come back to me. When he came to me with that song, he, he wanted to have a bridge, but he he couldn't find the bridge. Right. And uh, when he brought to me the bridge, we went right into it. I started, I think I did the first four, first four bars and he finished the last four okay. bars of the bridge, right. so. Okay. I knew then that he was, uh, he had a whole lot of creative ability and that he would be a great writer. Okay, mm -hmm. right. So you're saying Stevie Wonder had the first with that, the first that I would think Joe Public heard of it was, I think, Aretha Franklin. Oh, yes, we recorded Aretha. that on Stevie Wonder. And uh, there was several, a lot of, like another artist that was pretty big, very big at that time was Brenda Holloway. Brenda Holloway. Okay. Now, uh, I'm very sorry that I didn't get to do uh, more with Brenda Holloway, but I had a chance to do all I do. We did that on Brenda Holloway oh, first. Okay. Now, later on, Stevie Wonder came back and recorded it, and it got to be a hit tune. But it was a hit years ago with Brenda Holloway, but it never got released. I see. Right. Same thing with Diana Ross and the Supremes. I did a tune on Diana Ross called Slow Down. Uh, and that tune was never released. Okay, we'll Same come thing back. with Gladys Knight and the Pips. Right. Same thing, we recorded uh, a song with uh, them, Baby, My Love Is Showing. Never got released, that's a big hit. Okay. So, right. I had a lot of good experiences there that I look back on. Right, okay. Okay, we're back talking with Mr. Broadnax. Um, and he was telling us about uh, his um, work with artists such as Brenda Holloway and uh, Stevie Wonder. Um, Want to tell us more? Yeah, all of the Motown acts and the, uh, the Spinners, before they ever had a record, Spinners used to do background. They did a whole lot of background down there at the end. Right. Um, you did When I'm Alone, I Cried, um, Marvin oh, Gaye. Well, yeah, Marvin Gaye, yeah, one of the songs that had the pleasure of uh, Marvin Gaye doing is when I'm alone I cry. Okay. And the, the other song that I wrote for my first wife, if if my heart could sing. Okay. Right. Right. But uh, that was the experience that I look back on finally, and then the next experience when I left Motown. Motown left Detroit in 1969. I left in January of '69, just before. Motown announced that the Jackson 5 had come to Detroit. Okay. And uh, I'm sorry that I had, didn't have a chance to stay there and work with them, but I left and I, I worked with Aretha for a couple of years, and that was a very rewarding experience, working with her and her family, with her boys. and okay. uh, Well, I had knew her dad previous to that, but it was real good experience working closely with Aretha Franklin. And then I went into youth work. I went with Comprehensive Youth Services. This was a wonderful experience. I had a chance to work with youth and uh, Metro Detroit Youth Foundation here in Highland Park. I had experience of working there teaching English and writing skills.